a new way of thinking because until now we've regarded type 2 diabetes as inevitably downhill. It's going to get worse. But because of our work on the liver, and specifically the amount of fat in the liver, which seemed to be determining the liver insulin resistance, that really started a train of thought. Because in the morning when we wake up, that fasting level of glucose has been determined by what the liver has been doing in response to insulin. So liver insulin resistance seemed to be really important. Then, widening the focus, how about the pancreas? Surely this is such a crashingly simple disease. It goes up in prevalence if a population's overfed. If a population's short of food, it disappears. Hey, it has to be fat in the pancreas as well. Now, that was a hypothesis we were able to publish in 2008. But of course, we needed to set about trying to destroy our hypothesis. That's what you've got to do. The cardinal sin in science is falling in love with your hypothesis. Don't do it. So we set about trying to destroy it by taking a group of people with type 2 diabetes and providing them with a low-calorie diet. Now, it had to be a diet that they would enjoy and follow. But nonetheless, 700 calories a day, that's what we did. And we demonstrated that the fat disappeared out of the liver over eight weeks. But more importantly, within seven days, the fat had disappeared sufficiently for that liver insulin resistance completely to vanish. Fasting blood glucose went back to normal. Now, I'd emphasize this is short duration type 2 diabetes that we're talking about at the moment. But over the eight weeks of the study, the level of fat in the pancreas gradually went down and the beta cell function went back to normal. Normal! Wow! This was amazing to watch the beta cells wake up. It's the first time we've been able to do that in human history. So the question then became, OK, you've done it acutely, but is it going to last? The experts told me, no, this is going to be uh, just a short-term effect. Go back to normal eating, it'll go away. Well, we did the further study. It lasts. It's durable. And so the next big question is, can we actually make this stick in clinical practice? So we did a large randomized controlled trial in general practice, whereby we taught the practice nurses how to do this simple but effective weight loss program. They did that, and we demonstrated that, yes, type 2 diabetes can be made to go away. And in the direct study, we showed in the intervention arm of the study, at one year, 46% of people were free of diabetes, off all the tablets. At two years, 36% were still free of diabetes off all the tablets. So, two things. We know what causes type 2 diabetes. It's too much fat in the liver and the pancreas. The second thing is, it's possible to use a simple, effective way to reduce weight effectively by 33 pounds, 15 kilograms, and escape from type 2 diabetes. Now, to make the intervention as simple as possible, we based it upon a liquid formula diet. So a packet for lunch, packet for dinner, packet for breakfast. That was the easiest way. Now, the cost of these packets in the UK, the equivalent would be about $2 each. So that's not bad. Yeah. So this was provided, of course, as part of the research budget. But even if someone was buying it themselves, that's a lower cost per day than they'd be spending on food. So cost is not a barrier. In addition to the liquid diet, we advise taking non-starchy vegetables, salad foods, tomato, lettuce, cucumber, etc. Now that would be a small extra effect, but this is not expensive. This is not out of the, out of the world to, to actually do. We have funding to follow people up for an extra year. Good. We've got an application being assessed at the moment for the full five years of follow-up. So I hope we'll be able to follow these out to show what really happens in practice, because this is real life, and it's not easy keeping weight down after losing weight. What happens, even though the average weight of our population is trending upwards overall, that gives us slightly misleading effect. Because what's really happening is that most people are determined to keep it down and they're doing fine. But then one of them hits a life event, family illness, something else, they're busy thinking about that, and they lose it. And so whoosh, they go up, their weight goes up quite fast. Sure. And then the next week, someone else gets a problem. 
the cat gets leukemia or whatever. So in reality, this is going up. One of the really important things we learned from direct was that we need to provide rescue plans for these life events. And so we had a formal rescue plan. If someone's weight went up by more than four kilograms, about 10 pounds, then we would intervene and provide the liquid diet again. So that matter of responding to life's slings and arrows, sure. fortune is outrageous. <laughs> that matter is really quite important and it's a real learning point for those of us who battle with real life in clinical practice.